Right, hello everybody, welcome to the first round match between Bright and El Duderino. We started off with a uh, Riot, which isn't very impactful. Um, Bright with Necromantic, El Duderino with Nurgle, and in the commentary box with me is Purple Chest. Hello! Hello, hello Jim. Uh, what a cracky game of Blood Bowl we're looking forward to here. Bright, a debutant in the Chalice. Uh, uh, sorry, no, Bright, an experienced Chalice coach. El Duderino, his very first time qualifying for the Chalice. Uh, and he did, took Nurgle to do it. Um, we do have, as you said, a riot. Also, there is driving rain. Uh, I don't know if you can see that through your screens, lovely people, but there certainly is. So the AG4 Ghoul, uh, still obviously only one in nine to fail on that pickup, but uh, that is going to be a thing. We've got uh, we got a, a rowdy uh, sort of a rule of five from El Duderino, but he's pushed the beast up a little tiny bit. Uh, I think trying to trap that wolf if it does take those line of scrimmage hits. Yes, and to stop the follow up that is that his mm. flesh golem has done anyway for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting pair of flesh golems for Bright here. One of them is uh, is absolutely rookie, the one that just took that hit. The other one is uh, only move three, though it does have block and guard. Um, so perhaps one of the traditional high spots of this necromantic team, not quite so much this time. Using the stand firms there to get the four hits with the wolf without pushing himself onto the beast. That's some smart play. Yep. And now he can just chain the, the beast away if he gets a power with the middle white. No, 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 he's not doing yep. that. Oh, he's pushing it across in front of the wolf again. That's interesting. Don't. I don't like doing that and then not blitzing the... You know, well, one of the interesting them. facets of this is uh, is that Bright has a, a claw palm wolf. Yes. Which uh, lots of people strongly dislike in the Blood Bowl community. Some people really rate. Uh, the other wolf is, of course, a blodge step tackle, so they're both very rowdy wolves. Uh, as I said, the flesh golem's a little bit ordinary. Um, the ghoul is, uh, is agility four. That's another blodge stepper with sure hands. So there are some tools on this uh, this necromantic team. The uh, the chaos almost as rowdy as you'd expect. They have a claw pomming beast uh, pestigor themselves. Uh, they've got a nice ball carrier with two heads. Uh, the warriors a little bit disappointing, but but solid I suppose. There's a strength five. There's a mighty blow warrior, uh, and there's also of course uh, a claw mighty warrior. No and guard. the fourth one, yeah, there's, there's just no guard across this team at all, is there? That's that's an issue. Yeah. Um, however, the one guard they have got is on their Beast of Nurgle. And with the, with the Necromantic putting so many pieces on it, there's a, a nice little f hitting fulcrum there. Yes, absolutely. I might be tempted to go after this rookie Flesh Golem and put some Claw in Mighty into that, and we might see one less Flesh Golem on the perch. Yes, Claw Palmer, I would, I would like to see. Mm. There's no dirty player on the Necro, is there? Normally the Necro bring a dirty player or two. There's no... There's yep. no, no, there isn't on the on the Nurgle side either. They do have one on the roster, but it's missing for this game. Uh, both have a bench of two, so we might still see some Rotoros on B-Fouls. Uh, with the amount of Claw Mighty that the Necro are facing, I'm, I'm wondering if they can risk that. And there goes the first Pomp. And of course, that's a zombie gone. It's the uh, the naked guard zombie. Yeah. Interesting piece, but not perhaps one that you're that concerned about. Uh, the block guard fen zombie is also interesting. That's trying to stay on the pitch by avoiding claw palm, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's a guard off, isn't it? At the end of the day, he's got no guard. Well, one guard of his yeah. own versus yeah. uh, five guards, so that takes it down to four. So that I mean, that, that that's fair enough. Like. You do like to take out fleshies, don't you, when you get the chance? Yes, absolutely, they but, the arse, but that's they nice. really are. Um, but Necromantic, not really a team you think of as turtling behind a wall of guard. Um, but perhaps in this matchup, with the amount of guard advantage they have, we, we might see a bit of that. Yeah. He's going to come in. Uh, the strength five is quite nice, isn't it? Hard to, hard to deal with. Yeah, him. Yeah, and a, a reasonable way of trying to keep that claw pommer safe. Though, uh, you know, with, with the perhaps the worst zombie on the pitch gone, uh, and the other poor zombie, the one that just has block right on the other side, I'm not sure it's that much of a foul target. No. And that block zombie is now also marked up. Um, I, I like the pressure he's putting on. I think that's that's certainly interesting. He's, he's got a, a fend piece of his own. He's got a wrestle fend rotter that he's put in on, 
right in front of the white that's straight in front of the beast mm. of course he hasn't got the guard to to really you know frenzy trap pieces does he no it's it's really rough that he's got no guard i think feel like this team needed a few more games on it i don't know how far away maybe they needed a lot more games oh yeah two I mean, SPPs for him to get guard would have been yeah very tempting wouldn't it I think this is a, I'm sure El Dudarino won't mind me saying this, a classic example of someone who gets a team that, that suddenly gets a go Dode score that could qualify, it looks around and doesn't see a lot of competition and thinks, well, then I'm parking. Mm. Uh, and perhaps, you know, if this had been perhaps his third team that he'd gotten into a chalice, for example, perhaps he would have tried to push on. Uh, I, I don't hate that. You know, for some people, consider it a real milestone to just get something into the chalice. And if that was his real goal, then great, that's been ticked off and achieved. And perhaps next time he can be a little more... Uh, incautious uh, and try and get a team in that he feels can get a little further, a little deeper. Yes. We do like it deeper. Uh, there are some inducements. El Dudorino has taken two babes. Uh, which I, I guess that backing up regen is, is about keeping his better pieces on the pitch. Yeah, I don't know if he should have maybe sacked a sacked a rotter and I don't know like if he had a scum to get the second babe, but he could have maybe sacked a rotter and got a wizard, couldn't he? But then, how much does that help? Yeah, him? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it you know it is still quite a tight roster at thirteen facing, you know, a claw pomming wolf. Yeah. I, I think if that claw pomming wolf goes out, I'm a lot less frightened by this uh, this necromantic team. So trying to trap that and get a foul in on it might be a key thing to try and do. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I like the babes because, like, obviously you can't get an apple because it's a rubbish ego. Yeah. And, uh, you know, egos are absolutely terrible. They are. <laughs> now, interestingly, the, the claw pommer on the, the uh, Nurgle side does have tackle, so if, the, if you can get a hold of these wolves, they are in danger. Yeah, it's quite it's quite nice that his, that his both his uh, uh, whites are blodge as well, isn't it? So, like, all, yeah. all five good positions are all blodge. So, yep. Um, his rule of five, if you like. <laughs> yeah, it, it it really is only the golems that are very weak on this team. Uh, that's the weak point to me: the low move of one and the complete rookiness of the other. Right, he doesn't take the board down because he wanted to hit with the rookie fleshy. I'm not sure I like that. I think I would have much preferred to have blocked with the white if he was going to do that. But I guess this yep. way, I guess he was just like expecting a power or push, I guess, and not thinking of what happens if the ball down happens. But this way, you know it yeah. works, you get more hits. It's fine, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't think the beast is that frightening. It's a useful piece because of the guard, um, and using it as a hitting fulcrum, you know, perhaps trying to get it onto a wolf or onto a ghoul could be useful, but it's not perhaps going to get through that work, much work in terms of actual hitting. So I do understand why he wants to knock this claw mighty over, but it is a one in nine fail he's risking there. He's just... Uh, Failed the stench test on uh, the other Gales, the other Nurgle's warrior he'd set up. Yeah. So he's had to go in there with the white because he doesn't want that piece on his uh, somewhat slim line in front of this ball carrier. Well, he's given the hit on the ball, isn't he? Yeah, he is at the moment. Without tackle. I don't see how that stops now. Oh, it does manage to get a KO on that Nurgle's Warrior, though. Huge removal. That's, yeah, that's a huge removal for a, from a blockless piece on a, one of the very, very dangerous bloaters. Or Nurgle Warrior. You know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah, I really hate calling them bloaters. So now we've got to see what, what El Dudrino thinks, right? Either he, either he pulls everyone back in front and tries to... Uh, and tries to stabilise, or he can, you know, take a bit of a risk for the pow here and run around. I think it's probably better just to claw on something and and try to. Get I think it probably it. is. Um, I mean, I hate to call it the reckless tactic, but you know, winning the first half on numbers puts him in a very, very good position for the rest of the game. This is, you know, an overtime format. It does require sometimes a little different tactical thought as to how you can get it done. Mm. And its claw pom piece doesn't have jump up, so uh, that does, once it's pommed, it does limit its movement for a turn or two. Yeah, he could GFI and, and claw pom a, a werewolf, couldn't he? That seems quite nice. But then if yep. he does that, he's getting around, around the wrong side of the field, isn't it? Which is... It is, yeah, and again, that limits his movement in the next turn as well. Yep. Uh, that said, if you can take a wolf out, that's huge, a huge swing both for the drive and for the game. Yeah. I mean, even if it doesn't come back, it's, you know, the drive, it's fabulous to have one less wolf. 
if it if it doesn't come back at all, that's that's a major equity shift. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the first one of the day. It won't be the last. <laughs> oh man, that'd be really good. Wouldn't having an equity bar on on the like overlay. Of <laughs> I wish I could, I wish I was like a computer programmer so I could just do that. It'd be amazing. Um, now the Nurgle do seem to be responding to the fact that they are very much over one side of the pitch here after that removal. Do you seem to be trying to swing some pieces around in front of this drive? Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's sensible, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Centralising the ball, carrying Pestigore to give him, you know, responsiveness if it does suddenly try and switch to the other side. Wolves, of course, so fast. So fast they perhaps should be painted red. Well, what's what's Alp saying here? Uh, Elp has said that Blood Bowl isn't a strategy game, it's a dice game. Right. Well, it's both. Someone, it? Yeah, exactly. Someone like craps. It's both. There you are. Coffee Monster giving some visual representation of the equity shift there. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> it looks like he is coming for this wolf. Oh, it's oh he's got to re-roll the dub skulls, doesn't he? Yeah. I know he's only got two re-rolls, but... Well, two now. But it, it had to be done. You couldn't yeah. take that claw hit. No, absolutely He's not. got the KO! Wow. There we are. Uh, nice. Coffee, do you want to do the honours there? I think we need a, a <laughs> big shift back towards the left. <laughs> but that's now two players on, the, on like the wrong side, isn't there? It's just two plus <coughs> re-roll for the white to get away here, so we, we might yeah. just push down, the, push down the left here. Yes, I mean, it, it's way too early to want to score, but it's not too early if you have to score. And, of course, it does give you a chance of getting your wolf back. No, he's doing the exact opposite. He's dropping back. Wow, Jim. He really doesn't want an early score, does he? He wants to control that clock. Oh. He is. Oh, is he going to greet it? Come on. Yes. Oh. Yeah, of course he is. Six pushes, Jim. Six put. Well, five pushes and a skull, but six pushes effectively. Now the he's excitement. Like, Shit, I'm palpable getting palpable here. <laughs> yeah. Getting now, it. He's got nowhere to dodge off to either. That's his <laughs> other wolf in huge danger. <laughs> well, that was a bit risky by Bright. Um, obviously, had the potential to be just an absolute game winner instantly. Yes, which I think is why he dropped that uh, that ball back reasonably deep. Yeah. I liked that, you know, you, uh, throwing the guard, throwing the white to the guard, stand firm, blodge white a little bit under the bus in order to just protect that what, remaining wolf, his, uh, his only really hitty piece. Yeah. He is monstering this beast though, and he's going to have a little pop at it, and gets the pow. Does he just leave? Yeah, I like that, leaving it on the rookie fleshy, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you just those two can dance for the rest of the game. And just leaves the warrior tagged on the blodger and hope blodge works. Quite like that. Protects his yeah. Protects his promo. I mean, considering the the triple fail with the wolf, this is not a bad position he's ended up in. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was quite a nice, quite a nice idea for the turn, and obviously a bit unlucky on what he <laughs> used to reroll and didn't. Yeah. Didn't get I mean, that's huge. Hit, Six but... dice and not getting, you know, one of the, the two nice results on any of them is, is definitely unlucky, isn't it, Jim? Yeah. Um, it did, it was a very exposing plan, and uh, the way he fought his way out of it with, with really good positioning and some choice hits, I think it's been really nice. Yeah, yeah Bludge, Bludge does save the stand firm Bludge guard. Mm. These whites are property evil, aren't they? Yeah, they're really nice. I mean, I think Bright's got the advantage just because he's got 100 more TV. And El Didrino has bays, which are a bit rubbish, though quite nice when you get a KO'd warrior. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the of the Claw Pom Wolf. Um, I think Dude's team's a little light in places, but it's it's got some tools to get things done. Yeah. 
I think if I had even coaches here, I would slightly favour the Nurgle. Um, only slightly, just because Necro, not that brilliant, really. Um, but I do think Bright is a more experienced coach uh, at this sort of chalice format. And I think that could stand him in good stead. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, the, the big advantage that Nurgle have in these situations is the strength advantage. And that is, you know nullified somewhat by the massive guard advantage that the Necro have, haven't they? So Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just don't like the flesh golems and I think they can be the heart and soul of a team. But perhaps they are made up for with these two very, very good whites. Yeah, he's got one guard. Yeah. I always think of it as non because it's, it's on it's the only skill on a beast. So it feels like he's got no guard. <laughs> but yeah, he does have one guard, but and then he only hits the he hits the fender there, so he couldn't yeah, have the pylon, so, could he? No, even with a power there, wasn't going to be a pylon. But the you know, the piece is now recovered for next turn, except it's probably going to be somewhere where that wolf can reach it because that wolf can get wherever it wants. Exactly. How does he protect it? Double GFIs probably. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure about the uh, the amount of focus we're putting on the uh, the Rodge ghoul out on the very left flank. Yeah. There's nothing else to do, is there? <laughs> I think it's all well, right. Yeah. You throw him into the surf, you've got tackle on him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. So it, it's it's got a good chance of making his left flank quite weak next turn. And I suppose trying to suck a reroll as well if it dodges off, because it's probably not going to be... Uh, I can't see why Bright would go over there and do any hitting or recover it in any other way. No. But yeah, it's, a, it's a kind of a bit of an overcommit, because like, it's ob he's obviously opening up this side. Yeah. Um, especially as he's definitely getting blitzed on this <laughs> side. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, the claw is getting blitzed by the wolf again, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I like the double GFI there and then bring this block guy over to protect him as well. Because he's, just, he's obviously getting claw bombed and you don't really want your yep. claw bomber getting claw bombed. No. <laughs> However, he's survived the first hit. In comes the palm and he takes it. Woo. Now he's saying, come on, come on, foul me, let the ref call it. <laughs> he's got no one to foul with. <laughs> I, well, theoretically he could... Uh, no, he can't. <laughs> Five plus four plus to foul the block zombie. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't I was good, looking at uh, perhaps the dodge off with the terrible rookie golem, but it's doing good work just holding that beast in place. Isn't exactly, it? yeah, it's a nice trade confirmed so we can't get him into anything else even if he blitzes him with with you know something he might not knock him over and if he only pushes he stays on the beast so it's it's very nice getting it's a great use yep. of, a, of a rookie fleshy isn't it yeah if he was a good fleshy you wouldn't really want him isolated on the beast but it's perfect for crap fleshy <laughs> <laughs> oh this is very he's in range of the claw pommer that's horrendously risky. Surely he had to yeah. dodge this uh, edge guy to cover that first. You know, to, he's not even dodged. He's not even covered it at all. Wow. Wow. Yes, the ghoul, ghoul's just dodged and stopped, which I think is confusing um, because I'm confused by it. Uh, I think leaving a 4-3 for a two-die on this agility four ball carrier with a tackle mighty blow pommer is uh, is not something I would want to And do. it's maybe just a three, isn't it? Because he can he can bring people in. Yeah. can bring this guy uh, in and make it a one. Yeah, if you, can, if you can knock the fend over. I mean, it, it takes ooh, two assists there to do it easily, but one assist, you could certainly have a go. Um, yeah. And even if you push it, it's not the end of the world. You've still got a 4-3 if that's the best you can get. And I... Yeah, he's got two re-rolls. It's, it's the opponent's drive where you would expect the opponent to score. Um, so you can afford to throw a reroll at something like that. Yeah, I, uh, I like this because it's just devastating. If, if if you power him here, yeah, it's devastating because you you, yeah. you you devastate his drive and you maybe injure his his brilliant ghoul. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I think it has to be tried. Yeah, just move you can um, if you if you start by trying to hit this blodge ghoul down, the, the blodge white down, the one that's on the strength five, you get lucky in these hits, and he's made the first power. The second one's much harder. 
Uh, but if you do knock over this one, then you can even bring in the, the block Pastigor. Yeah, the dodge worked, unfortunately, though. Now, does he have the uh, the nerve to take this one die on on the fend piece to make it just a simple three plus to hit that goal? I, th I, th I like that. I really yeah, I like, like that a lot. Really. I can't believe he didn't dodge, dodge out the goal, the uh, white. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'd have like dodged out the white first to go here, and then and then gone for the dodge out on the goal to base the uh, the strength five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that ghoul really isn't doing a lot over there. Okay, he is trying this one die. Well, he's trying a 2D. He's trying a 2 that die. Okay. This like is, I said, yeah, if this, this fails... It's a bit worse, because now if it's a push, it's 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 an extra GFI to hit the ball. Yes, there is that. Um, but it is, you know, it's a 55% of making it just a 3+, yeah. 2+, plus to get 2-die with your claw pommy tackle piece on the best ghoul he's got, the best ball carrier on this Necro team. Um, I like it. Uh, oh, doesn't get it. Fourth down's fine, isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. You still did the 4-3, I'd have thought. Yeah. I think he had to think about re-rolling that. Oh, he's just going no, to hit. No, that's... Oh. Well, because they're pushes, we can't say if that would have been a three or a four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is nice, because I don't believe you should look at dice that way. You know, yeah. they're different dice. You're rolling them from a different reason. Yeah, Who knows if a butterfly flapped his wings? That would have changed everything. But uh, I, I think that's a bit of a... It's a bit of a weak second option. Oh. And then oh. the dodge afterwards, I think, makes the, compounds the error, really. Yeah, yeah, that makes it look really horrible. And full punished almost. Only a stun. Could have been worse. Yeah. Um, I'd be having a serious think here about whether I could... Uh, whether I could claw palm that ball carrier and perhaps leave that, uh, that kill piece fallible. Yeah, I think he definitely can. The problem is... He's going to think about scoring a little bit. <laughs> yes, it is getting a little late in the drive to maybe just be looking at uh, fun things rather than at aggressive options. Uh, now, El Dude has left his Rackle piece back central, which is nice. That's a, that's a good safety play there. Yeah. He, can, he does have, of course, this this uh, white can easily go and tag him. Uh, yeah, he can go where it wants, can't it? It's a Blodge AG4. It's a 1 in 36 for it to move anywhere. Mm. Yes, Coffee, no DP on the Necro or on the uh, the Nurgle. The Nurgle do have one on roster, but it's missing this game. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I'm concerned of. Right, the 4-3, it, it's one of those moves where, like, everyone says... Well, not everyone. But, like, when people are describing Blood Bowl for beginners and stuff, they're like, it's a game of risk mitigation and all this. But it's really not. Yep. It's a game of, like, odds maximization, isn't it? Equity maximization, as, as yeah, Daniel loves to say. And the, the, ultimately, I think that 4 plus 3 plus was the best way to win the game. That's yep. my opinion. No, I completely agree. I mean, when I teach newer players, one of the first things you say is don't do a 4-3 on your turn. You know, do safe moves, do nice, easy things. But that completely changes when it comes to the turn that could completely swing the match. If you're prepared to throw a re-roll into a 4-3, suddenly the odds aren't that terrible. Uh, you clearly shouldn't be doing it every turn. Yeah. Okay, the Pesticor comes back. Regen set to on so far. <laughs> yep. But now this Nurgle team starting to look a little thin to try and defend. Although Bright's not pushing the ball forwards. No. I mean, he doesn't have to. He's on the brink, though, isn't he? He's on the brink of 14 squares here. Yeah. I do like tagging this Rackler because... Um, just because these two aren't going to do something. One can block with the other one off. But then the other one can't do a lot. So I, I don't no. know. I think I would have rather... They, they, like yeah, I, I'm with you. Either. They don't have the range to really get to the point where they're useful, whereas here we can ignore that zombie and hit the white twice. Yeah. Uh, once with Mighty Blow, once without, but you know, taking that out would be a, another major equity shift in favour of the Nurgle. Yeah. It's noticeable that neither the Rookie Golem nor the uh, the Beast of Nurgle has done anything. Several turns, they're just staring at each other. 
wonder if for the second half there'll just be a note in the dressing room saying, we've fallen in love, we've left. Go for the, uh, okay, I think he was trying to uh, free up the strength five, bring it back involved with where this wolf and uh, everything else is monstering his ball carrier right now. Yeah, so this is a very tricky situation now, isn't it? All he's really got is the rackle, and maybe he takes him back. Move back with a carrier? This is risky without moving the, move the uh, yeah, zombie was first, a... right? In case of a push. Yeah, that's the way I'd have gone. Um, and if, if, if I really was going with that plan, I might have blitzed off with the strength five and moved afterwards. And then just back over to where this pack of doom is. Maybe you uh, blitz, maybe you rackle the, uh, the fleshy and then move the beast. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's his player. Yeah, get the beast back in front to where this wolf currently is and uh, the white there, maybe, yeah. yeah. Don't hate it. I can't see what else he's gonna do. I mean, I guess he could four plus three plus and come around for a two D on the ball without tackle. This obviously looks a lot yeah. worse though because you haven't got tackle and nor do you have core yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. You're hitting with your one of your least hitty resources. That's not usually ideal. No. He does have two heads though, so it's actually a three plus two plus. It makes it a lot more likely to True. Just go for yeah. Side step pins you at the sideline though, which is dodgy. Yeah, and there is only two rerolls left to cover three turns. Uh, same for Bright, of course. Two rerolls to cover two turns, which is different, but similar. You know what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, El Dudorino essentially has two turns left, doesn't it? Because the yeah. turn eight doesn't matter to him. <laughs> I guess you've got to go for it. Okay, you might get stuck on the sideline, but you can just dodge again in a three plus. Mm. It's, it's you're not going to get anything better at this point, are you? It's a three two. It's a three two to hit the ball. That is fine. And if you power him, he is in trouble because his edge four is over there. Oh. oh, I do not like that. No, and it seems quite unlikely to produce a good option, didn't it? Yeah, some, yeah. Thinking about it more, that hit on the ball was alright. I mean, you might, you might, you might, you might, you might sidestep him closer to the end zone. Or as it handled if he failed the dodges out. But I think, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you know you might pop him right. If you might get there yep. about using a reroll, and you might, and you know, so you might have a like about a fifty-fifty to knock him down. And uh, if you knock him down there, yeah, again, very, very hard to see how the uh, how the necro get it done. I mean, I know they've advanced the Rackle Ghoul, the Rack, sorry, the Rodge Ghoul as an option, but it's it's not a very believable one in the rain, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I hope not, coffee. I yeah, I really hope wanna, that's not the case. Definitely didn't want to do that. Okay, a sideline cage. Of course, it's on a sidestep piece, so even a dive in here doesn't really help much. And you have a feeling there's probably going to be some guard covering it from any angle anyway. So the, the two that a pesticle, the plus strength the pesticle would get from its horns, of course, mitigated by that. Uh, that. Oh, no. The zombie guard is choosing to tie up the uh, the pommy piece. I guess that's why he put Fend on it. That was a, a pending skill pregame. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right, isn't it? It's nice having a Fender to put on them, to be fair, because... Yeah. It's, it's better than nothing, isn't it? A fend, fend on a low value, and he's he's actually quite high value with block guard, but still, even then, relatively low value piece, isn't he? And then having mm -hmm. a fend on him. Oh, now he gets to knock him down. That's nice, isn't it? Huge. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big takedown, and it's going to make the uh, you know bringing those pieces back to relevance makes the the stall next turn the cage he can build so much easier. Well, there's no. Oh, I mean, I next think we. <laughs> it's a score next turn. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. 
it's just... But, I mean, it gives him the pieces to deal with just about anything thrown in his face. That yeah. beast of Nurgle has still been stuck on that rookie uh, golem for the entire half. Yep. Yeah, he hasn't even activated him, has he? he hasn't even nope. Salvage the, there was definitely an argument for maybe blitzing that fleshy at some point to try and lighten yeah. up the, the blocker or whatever. 75% knockdown and get the beast relevant. He's his only guarder, so he has been without guard for the entire half due to that uh, fleshy tag. So he's going in for the one day here. With the and wrestle. Yeah, throws his last reel at it. Nogles, of course, no real point trying a one turner. Uh, it's not going to happen. Fails the GFI. And of course, these Nogle can very easily put three stand firm on the line. Yep. Now, do you make blocks? You've got to reroll. I guess you have to make blocks. Can claw pump, claw pump the beast? Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? That is beautiful. You've got to claw pump the beast here. It's his only guard. Yeah, I think it's, knockdown, it's not it? a terrible thing to do. Yeah. Oh, well, you have to. I have to do the claw bomb. <laughs> I do, excuse me for a sec, Jim. I will be right back. I'm assuming this is going to get scored, uh, that he's not going to mess this turn up. I just need to take a very quick bio break. Okay, okay. Basically, I need a piss. Yep. Oh, he foul appearances there. The beast farts in his face. He doesn't get the claw bomb. Yeah, but the, the the strength five warrior you might you, you might not um, you might not knock him over. Right? And I, d I don't know how hard it was to get the assists on the strength five, but the uh, the beast was super easy to get the assists, and you were also like unprotected in his only guard. The strength five warrior is a lot less powerful than the beast, I think. Um, when he's when it's his only guard, like that's the thing. If, if he had five guard, then might still go for the unprotected beast. Also, he's strength 5, so he's hard at, like, well, okay, they're both strength 5. But, like, with the beast being strength 5, it is hard to hit him in, like, normal play, isn't it, a lot of the time. So, getting that claw from hit on the beast was lovely. So, yeah, nothing, I would say nothing really wrong from El Dudorino there. Maybe, maybe a bit timid on not going for the desperation players, you know, because I think... Not only was he in a bit of a desperate situation, the like payoff both times was massive. You know, like claw pumping that, especially the claw pump hit. Like the claw pump hit was hard. Four plus three plus two plus to hit him. Like that was a hard move. Um, but I just think I just think it was worth it because if you get the claw pump hit on him, you pro like you know you're probably knocking him down. You've got a good chance of removing him if you do knock him down, and if he loses that player, he's fucked. And then the 3 2 to 2 Dean without tackle is not very nice either. But <laughs> if you do it, then um, then again he's going to struggle to score at all, isn't he? Because he, he had he had delayed a lot. He, he, he was risky there. It was a risky offense from Bright. He definitely, um, yeah, it was a bit, yeah, yeah that, was, that was a bit crap. <laughs> um, because he, he could have instead of doing that he could have blitzed the he could have tried to blitz the beast free and and like you know it's fair enough not like I'm you know I'm not saying it was definitely right to go for the the ball hits I think it I like I think it was right to go for the ball hits and it's what I'm thinking watching I would have done now obviously I may not have done the whole game but um from the uh, elevated position of watching it and and you know not really caring about the result you get to make more brave decisions in a way, don't you? Because if you play... Yeah, I think that that's definitely true. Um, I think particularly, you know, some of the first times you've got into these sorts of positions, you become a little too safety-minded at times. One of your key thoughts is, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to ruin it by doing something wrong. But that kind of fear can stop you doing the thing that's right, too. Yeah. I think he... I think it was right to go for the... Both hits, actually. Both times he had a chance to hit the ball, I think. It was right to go for mm -hmm. both of them. Although it took me a long time to realise. <laughs> the second time, with the 3 plus 2 plus. To try and power Blodger. Like, it's not, it's really not good, that, is it? But, you know, the payoff was there, wasn't it? If it had worked. Yep. Yep. Well, I'll take a 1 in 3 shot over no shot at all. Yeah. 
or even uh, you know a straight six is better than no chance. And a straight six is better than hoping somebody fails a two dice block <laughs> stuff, isn't it? Like you know, there's there's lots of times where people like you know blitz to base the ball or whatever, and it's like there's just no point because <laughs> you're hoping they're one in twelve nine six, or you're hoping they're one in eighty one yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're much better off trying to bowl a three six in a row yourself with a reroll or whatever. <laughs> Yes, hoping for the, the sort of almost unforced error, to use that ter tennis term, is, is sometimes just, you know, you're wishing on horses. It's not going to happen. <laughs> They're never going to be unicorns for you. Absolutely sick as eggs. I mean, this is still a, a rowdy chaos team, a Nurgle team. Now that it's, um, it's got its claws back on the pitch, it could still just destroy the, uh, the Necro. Yeah, that was a huge removal, wasn't it? L losing that claw mighty, that's basically half his kill power was gone instantly. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if you can use the beast this half. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Having a beast, <laughs> having a beast of Nurgle this half would be nice. <laughs> and the claw bomb really not getting through the work that uh, you know you perhaps hoped it would. It did get the wolf removal, but only to KO. Yeah. All the KOs now back and available. That's the thing, that turn that he caught upon the wolf, like if he if he tried to recover his line a bit, maybe he would have got the beast relevant for the rest of the drive. And mm -hmm. that could have been you know, and that's one of those like it's just a judgment call, isn't it? It's, you know, who can say who can say if it was right or wrong? Like genuinely it, it might have been you know, if he if he'd you know, you just don't know, do you? <laughs> I didn't I didn't hate I didn't hate the hit on the wolf. It was a good chance to um you know, to turn the momentum of the game. Yeah. Or for an equity swing in the trendy parlance. <laughs> um, but I did feel after that we perhaps had a couple of turns where there was a little too defensive a focus on those pieces I didn't feel the foul was incoming um, at any time really there never looked to be a piece that was in a position to be doing that uh, and I did not I did feel we yeah, abandoning the beast to just stand there looking at the, the rookie rotter I thought we lost more by losing the beastman than uh, the necro lost by losing that rookie rotter yeah uh, it's a, it's a rowdy it's a rowdy team for like sixteen hundred TV, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> but it's it's not sixteen hundred, it's eighteen hundred. Um eighteen yeah. fifty or something, isn't it? The the necro about nineteen fifty, how old are Um the uh the yeah, the the necro about nineteen forty, I think, or nineteen hundred maybe, and then the and then the no the Nurgle are eighteen hundred. Um mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like this Pestigors replaced somebody recently maybe. And this, this Nova Warrior as well, maybe. You know, maybe yep. two players. I don't know how many games they played. You know, maybe he has. But I mean, the same them. same seems to have happened on the on the necromantic side with that uh, that rookie flesh column. Yeah. You can't believe he's seen you know forty games and not managed a single skill. <laughs> no. The uh, inducements were two babes for the Nova. Because they can't get apples. <laughs> I don't want eagles. <laughs> no, I. I do wonder in my heart if perhaps something like a bribe, or maybe even extending the bench so that you could foul with uh, with reckless abandon in a first half that didn't look like you were going to get anywhere might have been a way to go. The problem is, of course, it's a regen team, so you might remove it for the drive, but your odds of getting them down under, um, you know, an eleven to start the second half or even overtime don't seem that great. Yeah, ego for 50k would be fine. I'd get two e I'd, I'd regularly get an ego or two for 50k. So they're probably maybe too good for 50k. But I guess it's hard to cost them then, isn't it? Because 100k, yeah. they're trash. <laughs> and at 50k, yes. they seem like they could be too good. So I don't yeah. the right cost is. Well, I, I think what you're sort of suggesting, Jim, is that we could maybe start at 75 and have a look at that. <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems somewhat funny. implied but it's funny that you've got like 50 being OP and 100 being trash isn't it you wouldn't think yeah. it'd be that far apart for 50 TV it is to me one of the better points of Blood Bowl 2020 is it looks like we're going to have a lot of enjoyment choices uh, and even more to come yeah. yeah that's true yeah BB3 is a new world of 5k that's true you, you'll regularly get 5k in winnings as well yep regularly you will get odd, odd amounts of winnings. So only one removal on the line of scrimmage. They do now both uh, both feature a bribe as an available option. Yeah. I know it's a trash piece, but might it be worth just fouling this uh, this zombie just to get the numbers up? Well, 
I'd say Ducky would, but that's that's disingenuous because he may well not. But I do remember. I will always remember the the game where he was uh, he was he had Bretonians and he was playing against uh, Skaven, and the Skaven had about two good players, and he just indiscriminately fouled everybody because it let him it, you know it let him uh, you know yeah. snowball in the match, and it ended up obviously working and being a great strategy. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe it is more valid than I would have thought myself. I mean, here, if you, uh, if for example, you hit the fend piece, then put the beast on it as well, you could have five assists to drop a foul in onto it. Mm. Uh, that's a reasonable chance of doing something to that zombie. I think he's not doing it now because this guy marks the town. No, he doesn't mark the town guy, and he's not doing anything. Okay, I thought he would have come up and marked the town. Yeah, it's guy. definitely not happening. The, the, the rotter that would have fouled has just moved. And with you know, with two wolves and the uh, the agility ghoul and the uh, the nice zomb um, nice uh, white all able to come for this ball. It, I mean, keeping it safe as you advance is an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like just putting him up there to, to to tie him up, and then it also like keeps the screen wide because you don't want them coming yeah. like coming around. Yeah, that's the that's where I'd have put him. Yeah. If I wasn't using him to foul, I do think this is the turn you could perhaps have afforded to do that foul without getting yourself massively out of position because the ball was always going to stay very deep. Um, I liked tagging that zombie too, Jim. If I wasn't doing the foul with the rotter, then tagging the zombie was definitely the next priority for me. I think dropping it back into that midfield position to cover where you might go with the ball next turn, I, I'm not seeing a lot of utility in it. Yeah, yeah you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, you know, so it's, it's quite good having someone else, like, you know, having a that you know is really, really good at blood ball, having a, having a bit of a different take um, is interesting, and obviously it definitely, definitely works. Um, yeah, exactly. Ducky saying exactly that that he, you know, he doesn't mind a terrible foul if it basically he says if it increase maintain player equity. Um, so yeah, it's all about sometimes a, a raw numbers game. I know there are good pieces and bad pieces, but I always keep a track in my head of who's got the numbers on the field. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really good, isn't it? The the wraith on the face of it is really good with a sidestep. Like, mm. It's obviously brilliant. It's brilliant having sidestep, but it's obviously terrible having a. <laughs> it's terrible having no hands. So whether which way that comes out with with the new wraith, I don't know. I I feel like people are underestimating how bad no hands are. To be honest. Yeah. Um, I really want to play with it and see it played a bit, Jim. It's. Yeah. What I love about it is that it's really differentiating Undead and Necro even more, which I think yeah. needs doing if we're going to keep both those races. Yeah, for sure. Um, it has gone up a price a bit as well, making Necro even tougher to squeeze everything into. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, No Hands is terrible. It really does limit their ball carrying options to the Wolves and the Ghouls, of which there's not many. Mm. He can't greet this, can he? Not with Overtime possibly losing no, looming. No, he but I don't, why did he go around, the, around that side? He could just hit from here. I so think he was going to try and use his bribe, was he? Oh no, because he's moved everything that could have been a foul piece. I, then I don't know. I don't know what to tell you there. Yeah. He, he only had to hit from here to hit in the stand firm. Yeah. Um, but he makes the GFI and... Uh, <laughs> and then covers it with the rookie fleshy. Yeah. Certainly I think Bright's had the slightly better dice so far, but I'm... I do sense a timidity in El Duduino's play. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with... Uh, who was it that just said that himself? Zeludonio. No, it was uh, Prankster Vang. Me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it was you, Prankster Vang. I yeah. did just scroll up and correct myself. You're right, yes. Well, at the risk of mentioning a horrendous roster, um, Sage and Dord worked together to make a Slanesh roster for uh, Blood Bowl 2 as an idea. And I hated the roster. And when I back when I allowed people to pay channel points to, to make me play a game of Blood Bowl, Squirrel Dude forced me to play... Um, Two games of Blood Bowl with that, both for, both with and against the uh, Slanesh Demons versus Gadenic. And right. uh, what I found was they, they made demon, uh, demonettes with claws and no hands. And the no hands right. was just, it was absolutely crippling, like, you know, knowing that they weren't a threat. 
you know yeah it, like that's yeah. the biggest thing and 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 people are like oh well i don't score on 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 white anyway you know and i, I don't need to carry on white i only need to carry on these and these and these but you know like that situation there if he's got a, you know, in the first half, you 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 now you go for that hit, you know, you go for that three plus two plus yeah. on the plodger because he's fucked because he literally can't pick up with the whites. <laughs> yep. Um, this is fascinating, Jim. He's uh, El Duino has done a quick bit of maths here and thinks he can surf this wolf. He can. Yeah, I hated this move. I didn't say anything, but I hated it. <laughs> it's a lot of commitment, isn't it? It's it's fine though. It's a fine amount of commitment, I think. Mm. I mean, I, I, I don't quite know why the wolf was right on the edge when it didn't need to be. Yeah. I think it was trying to protect itself from the uh, the claw palm pestigore. And, you know, people have heard me say this. Sometimes you need to be away from the claw. Sometimes you just need to not fear it because that's the way you get this done. No, that was, that was terrible. I mean, that was genuinely why? terrible. Yeah, but we've left this as a go for it to do the hit, whereas we didn't... No, 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 I, no it's no, a pest, not a rot. Or I'm wrong. It's yeah. fine. It hits on six. Yeah. So that wolf is gone again for the whole of this half like it was for the whole of the last. Yeah, for no reason. Oh, maybe for the rest of his life. Ah, oh, <laughs> and that isn't a regen. I'm looking in a client that shows me that's not coming back. <laughs> oh. It's only badly hurt. It'll, oh, no. No, it's regen. It did. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that's not how that usually works, um, but... Perhaps they've fixed that bug. Oh, you mean the, <laughs> the animation? Well, it was a surf, wasn't it? So uh, I guess it's okay. the surf animation, whatever happens. Claw pump could no, be back to protect the ball here. Yes, I mean, otherwise you're leaving it a bit exposed as well. So that's, uh, yeah, that's probably nice, worth just pro yeah protecting the ball and the claw pump at the same time. It's yeah, really nice. Wow. Still, it's out for the drive. That's That's still a good thing. It's brilliant, uh, and there's no real cost. There's no, it's not no. putting the ball under pressure or anything. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's just it's moved your your sort of defensive line from the central point uh, over to that edge for one turn, and it's actually marginalised. You know, the other wolf, uh, the rookie <laughs> golem, is now miles away from the action. Yeah. Uh, the other golem, you know, it's a it's a mummy. It moves three. It's not getting there this turn oh, either. I think this is a bit much. I think that that, that guy should have just basically stayed where he was. Yeah, or half the difference between the beast and this cage. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, somewhere in that area I think would have been nice and strong. Um, it, it's... I'm not sure the Necro, particularly with that takeout, can do it now, but... Getting the... Uh, cutting this team in half might be an option at this point. But I don't hate it, Jim. I mean, you know, the beast still has two good friends. There's no way it can be uh, removed from both of them this turn, so it can have a reasonable shot at activating next turn. I think it's too big a risk, show me magic, because why would you, like, if you go for the turn off, wouldn't you get that anyway in overtime, don't you? That's the thing. Yeah, no. You, I mean, again, it's that, that change from CCL format to overtime format. Um, particularly if you get up on numbers, which he is starting to do, then what you do with the rest of this half is you try and kill as many things as possible with your advantage whilst ensuring that you can score and see what happens with the overtime ball. Yeah. Oh, he tried to move the beast and stupided. Uh, he might extricate. He trying he might, to push. I think yeah. Was, yeah, he might extricate, I, but he's not. He's, I thought he might use that to extricate his, uh, his blodge white and actually, you know, cut off the team. As you said, he could have split the team. He's yep. not done that. Um, I mean, that the beast going stupid was the perfect opportunity to do that, but he's not. Yeah, gonna, yeah. He's just going to claw upon the warrior. <laughs> it, it certainly looks that way. So maybe, maybe Bright has given up. Um, and running no, he's running going out. for the beast. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. He is blockless and he's only guard. I really do like going for the beast when you can. Gets the stun. Has he got the nerve to pile on here, knowing there's... Oh, no, he gets a KO. Okay. Just very slow on my computer to show me that. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think you can pile on that, can you? No. No, surely not. You've got it out for the drive again. It's a regen piece. That's almost as good as you could expect with a casualty. The problem is your drive is fucked. <laughs> Isn't it? That's the thing. And he's coming back in a 2+. plus. So... The problem is, even if you chasm, he still comes back in a four plus, doesn't he? So that makes yeah, it's, it it's better, but not that much better. Yeah. 
If he didn't have region, I think you pile on there because I think this driver's lost anyway. Yes, and I, I don't think there's a lot of foul risk. There's just too many pieces between uh, where you're piling on and where all the uh, Nurgle are. Mm. Yep, trying to stop this Nurgle warrior getting any kind of hits back, uh, particularly on the wolf. I think that's probably done. <laughs> uh, the downside of this position, of course, is the Nurgle can just push up the right flank very, very simply here. Yeah, and now the, now the only cost of that serve has turned into an advantage is now they've got they're outnumbering 8 to 1 where they want to break through <laughs> yes right. yes that zombie has quite a weak future doesn't it <laughs> just a bit outlook is bleak for that yeah you wouldn't want to sell it insurance right now <laughs> your your direct line manager would not be happy with that as a as a sale call <laughs> Yeah, it's a good point. Yes, exactly, T Man Taylor. That's what I'm talking about. That in this position, if you get up on numbers, then you start to you try and stabilize a push forwards with the ball, and then you try and bring a couple of your rowdy pieces back and see if you can chip some of the better necro pieces either permanently, or even remember they don't have the babes. So even two KO rolls, if you can put four or five decent pieces out KO'd, there's a good chance one of them's missing any overtime. No, he's not going. He, oh God, he greeds the claw palm. Wow, he really wants that wolf dead. <laughs> I mean, it has got through some work, but it's it's not what I or you would do, Jim. No, it's well, it, yeah, it's 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 trading drive equity for yeah for game equity. Yeah, yeah. It's a horrible move for winning the drive, but it could be a great move for winning the match. Could it? Again, if he didn't well, have region, I like it a lot. Yeah, more. he's broken armor. And the pylon only stuns it again. Two rolls at the injury. Neither one managing to remove it. Yeah. Yeah. And and also you are trading a bit of match equity as well because you're using a reroll, which you know you need for this half and the third half that's likely to happen. Yeah. Looking quickly at the numbers, he broke the armor with the claw, so it was uh, the mighty blow was there for both of those uh, injury rolls. Yeah. But a six and a four, just not enough to take it somewhere interesting. And now, of course, there's a bribe, so he's definitely getting fouled. Yeah, Even definitely 100% getting fouled. So now you need to think, well, actually, instead of pushing forward, do I need to put some things in to just defend this, uh, this killer piece? Mm. And if you do, that obviously exposes the ball as well. I mean, the wolf's out for the next turn, but there's still a, an agility white and an agility ghoul around. Yeah. You can still push up past this zombie, but... Probably isn't worth it. No, no, I think you stay behind him now, don't you? You've got the warriors in place. Just move. Yeah, behind and you him. put the wrestle fend piece in to try and limit the, this foul if it comes. And with, well, it, it's, it, it'll come. It should yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. You've you've got to just trust in the bribe, haven't you? One in eighteen to get sent off. Foul yep. with foul with a good player. Who cares? You've just got to. Um, you've got to. Um, you've got to foul him here. <laughs> you just got to. He's, he's just too valuable. Yep. That actually doesn't help because you can just chain him off, can't you? Yes. Yeah. It's not the position I would have gone for, but it does. Uh, it is the piece that you can either get an assist on for the uh, the Nurgle Warrior to do a hit with. I mean, you can't cancel the guard that's on him. Yeah. However, going up into that position on the two guards, the white and the uh, oh no, they're both whites on the two whites would have meant that any hit that uh, doesn't take him down would have slightly mitigated assists on the foul. Yeah. So that's the upside of it. But it, it, yeah, I think he wants to hit with this warrior as well. Okay, that's... I don't know what that piece is doing in that square. It, it adds nothing, really. I mean, one square to its right, you know, double tagging that zombie, I quite like. It gives you different options for hitting it. If you don't want to use the Claw Mighty on it next turn, you could just use the block and then use the Claw Mighty elsewhere. But right there, it, it doesn't seem to add anything to this uh, this shape, to me. It is a red dice push to get... to get. Well, if you red dice power, you get two dice on the ball, but uh, I don't think you go for that now, do you? I think you just get... I think this is where... Uh, oh, yeah. he gets the foul appearance! Massive! Massive. Now maybe that you could is huge. Yeah, that's a really, really nice one for him. 
that was the angle that was able to chain the uh, the fend wrestle piece off and just give the assists for this possible foul. Yeah, well that is that is a massive equity shift. We might see the blitz from the flesh goal. But he's yeah, got and well, now, that, though, now, the, now the position that he put that beast in doesn't look so bleak anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now it's looking pretty good. Um, I guess the Edge 4 could come around and blitz that warrior, maybe. I don't uh, know. It, it's, it's niggling at me, Jim, because I don't see him taking down the strength 5 uh, and the, uh, the wrestle fend. So why hasn't that golem stood up yet? Yeah. If we did say earlier that some of the things you tell a newer player doesn't work at this level so much, um, but pieces that are definitely not dodging or moving or being free during the turn need to stand up. There we are. It has done now. So only one move out of order. That's not terrible. Uh, again, the stress at these levels shouldn't be underestimated. We all make mistakes in Blood Bowl almost every turn. Yep. So yeah, he's not getting the assist from him. No. He's even, he's even going to fall on that one. Oh, he you do. I mean, now it's a single assist. It, well, even possibly a zero assist. <laughs> I mean, you can try and uh, assist the other white to knock off this beastman and then four plus dodge with the zombie to foul. Yeah, you could go for the four plus zombie, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. That could be I mean, good, I, I, I don't see why the zombie wants to stay there and get claw mighty yeah. just for the hell of it. Yeah, I like that. I'd rather, like that I'd rather take a 50% chance on this foul. There's now yeah. two. There's now one assist on it. Um, you can knock the other one. Yeah, yeah now this guard assists. knocked the other one off. That gives you two assists if you make it. That's all right. Yeah. Here That's what go. I'd be doing. Here we go. Four plus dodge. Oh, can't re-roll it. No, you can't re-roll that. <laughs> Just because you want to see Claw Pommens die. I mean, I do too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the white could have just two plus with dodge and got the guard, and yeah, so he really could have gone for the. Uh... I mean, well, I mean, the, the 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 white was the one that I would have blitzed with, but I guess yeah, you could have, you could have, um, you really could have got in the the white could have just dodged in the front of the cage, couldn't he? Could have one deed this guy, and if you power him, you can two D the ball with a with a dodge from the other white. So there, there was a real good chance of actually hitting the ball there, but. Yeah, the dodge into five plus with a reroll. That's over fifty percent, isn't it? Just well, you, about. No, you, could, you could have one deed. You could have one deed the warrior. That's the thing. Yes, yes. The, uh, sorry, yes, you're right. That's um, the huge one. And if you yeah. kill him, it's, it's devastating. You know, it was maybe worth using the reroll because you can maybe win the drive there, don't you? If you if you power him and take him out. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Perhaps that was an over focus from Bright there on the this claw pump piece and trying to foul it out. Yeah. Which, as I said, you know, I think the best, and he did the best way to do that, I think, to get two assists in and then a four plus to get the foul in. Yeah. Um, but that's not great odds once you add it all up. I mean, I know it all mostly worked, but except yeah. the four dodge. Well, that's the thing. I think I think if you do it the first one, if if you get the if you get the if you get the warrior pow on the initial yeah. block from the flesh, yeah. then I think you go for the foul. And when he failed yeah. that, that's what I thought he might have switched to the to the come for the ball. But it looked crap because I didn't think of the. I didn't think of just dodging the two plus to uh, get the assist, and, and then obviously you can one him. So yeah, no, and then he, he would have had also he would have had the ghoul here, wouldn't he? Like the edge four ghoul was back here, so you know if he yeah to, him, to fetch he, afterwards, yeah, he maybe he's fetched afterwards. But now the now the drive is over. Like now he's only playing for overtime. It's not right. It's surely, surely that's true. Uh, particularly now with that. Uh, that KO. Yeah. 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 The edge four dodge, white was the was the probably the player. But yeah, now it's going to be real hard. I mean, I guess they're still fast, right? He's still got these two very mobile players. He's just lost one of his most mobile players, but he's still got two very mobile players that can maybe just come around and do something. Yeah, and the wolf isn't stunned anymore, um, so it, it's definitely getting up and going somewhere next turn. Yeah, so. Um, so he does have to think about that if he's advancing this ball, which it looks like he is. This looks like a screen to advance the ball behind to me. It, that's what I was thinking, but I think it's maybe just going to be a loose cage. I think mean, you could just like stand here or something. Okay, yeah. I mean, the wolf has a lot of range, but not quite enough to get around in front of that pestigor and into anything that's caging behind it. Sad that he had to expose his other wolf. <laughs> yeah, that was that was crazy. Like there was yeah. just no excuse for him standing on the sideline. 
No, it, it was odd. And particularly when the Nurgle had very little tied it up. Um, it, it was always obvious they had the numbers to get around it and surf it. Not, I mean, it was good of Eldu to spot that and to go for it. I think yeah. it was his best moment of the second half so far. Yeah. I didn't like the turn after it. I know he wanted that wolf down, but... Well, you know me, Jim, I'd always take the position if I can. Yeah. And then he's got to come back to try and stop me, and that's going to expose pieces. And if I get into a nice stalling position, you know, that means I can free up some killers to go hunt things down. I would have prioritized that personally, but I, I can't say I hated that hit on the remaining wolf. Yeah. You know, as we said in the first half, if you can chip that piece, it is a huge change in the game equity, even if the drive equity suffers. Yeah, and chalice equity as well, right? You're stopping all those claw palm hits for the rest of the match. Yep. So, like you know, he can ha he can win this game, why? and then have why? it. <laughs> okay. He he could win this game, but then have like a turn twenty, turn twenty three claw pump blitz kill somebody, can't he, or whatever, you know? And then yeah, he'll be not happy at all. So there's there's a lot to be said for getting rid of the claw pump when you get the chance. How old school on? I'm just trying to be down with the kids, fault force. <laughs> Strength? Is he exposed? Not that exposed. Because the push directions, Dimmy, that's the thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the frenzy. Ah, okay, yeah, he can go that way. One, two, three, four, five. It's a GFI to hit. One, two, three, four. No, no, it's not a GFI to hit. Oh, yeah, okay, now he is exposed. <laughs> that was a nice angle, though. I like that. Oh, he can even push him now, and then he can chain him out, can't he? Because he got the power. Which, I don't know if that's nice or not, but I think it's nice. Yeah, I think he uh, he can chain the. No, he's yes, he is chaining the uh, the white forwards here into a, an interesting position. Oh yeah, that's better because then he's he's cancelling that assist and he's getting two D there, so he can get out. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. That's much better than push direction. So he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Does he pile, or does he? F it doesn't pile and fouls with the uh, fouls with the uh, ghoul. Two assist foul with the ghoul. What do you reckon? I reckon there's no chance on this earth that he's doing that. Not while there's a hole in my ass. Um, I, I don't. Oh, I do hate it, Jim. Even with a bribe, it's a big, big risk with the, you know, with your primary ball carrier in this rain. I, I don't think you could risk it. How about white foul with three assists? Well, I mean, the shame of it is that that zombie just stood up. Because if it had stood up and fouled, I wouldn't have hated that. Mm. The white foul I don't hate as much. Um, that's a piece that oh, it's foul. lovely to have. He is doing the ghoul foul. Wow. Not Trusting to his bribe there, not even breaking armor. Yeah, that's, that's pretty big. Yeah, That's a nice, uh, nice chip back. But with this free, uh, free guy, surely four, five, three, four, five. So at the moment it's one D. You could take this guy round. One, two, three, four, five. A GFI, a GFI, and then you could blitz him. But he could just blitz one of the guarders, I guess. Couldn't he? I could blitz the. You could blitz the. Oh, yeah, the problem is that that's really thinning your ball defence at a time where suddenly quite a few of your pieces are tied up and this wolf is back active. Yeah, I think you claw on the wolf. You can just claw on the wolf, can't you? Yes, you can, and you should. Yeah. Claw on the wolf seems very good. Because you can very much power this guy and get an assist that way. So you'll be strength five. I don't know how you make him strength. Oh, he's hold up power this guy. So maybe make this block first. Maybe block the uh, block this stun firm guy first and see what happens. Maybe. Yeah, the, the, I mean the slight problem with that is he is blodge, but it, you know if you don't try it, it definitely won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> it does drop it to about a one in three. Like I think it's pretty nice to go for the club, go for the wolf this turn. Okay, he's not. Oh, he's got. Okay, he's gone with him. And then that chains out his guy to stand him up safely, maybe. Mm. That's okay, because you definitely want to rescue the claw bomber, don't you? Yeah, he and needs to get back active somehow. Yeah, and obviously the best way to 
rescue him is by claw pulling the fuck out of somebody. <laughs> but if you can't do that, and it, it was, there was a lot, it wasn't easy, to be fair. It wasn't easy to rescue him. So this is maybe the most sensible. Oh, and he gets the huge Kaz with no regen. He does. Yeah, that one's, uh, <laughs> that one is gone, Jim. Well, there you go. I mean, who, who needs to blitz with claw pom when you rack a... <laughs> just, just I mean, randomly really hurt. Season. If there is another game, that wolf will be back, but it won't be back in this game. Well, that's mm. clearly the error he's been making. He's been hitting with a mighty blow claw block piece when actually he should have been hitting with just a wrestle tackle piece. Yeah. I hope he's learned his lesson. <laughs> yeah. And now this is pretty much all over. Now that's uh, adding to that the uh, the plus agility white being KO'd. Suddenly, this necromantic team doesn't look very responsive. And that error positioning the first wolf looks even worse, doesn't it? Yep, it looks horrific now. Just put this guy here to... Uh, I like yeah, I'd be hitting the rookie golem here. I, I don't care about that blodge white at the moment. It, it's not relevant that much. So I'd be hitting the rookie golem. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do, though. Yeah. Rather than hit the white. Problem is that leaves that leaves his cooler two plus dodge out, doesn't it? I, I wouldn't have minded. Uh... Yeah, but a long way to go around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've only got to move the ball one space forwards, two max, and it's yeah. going to really struggle to get in the back door. <laughs> I don't think there's a way around the front door either. No. Not this turn, but I just like in general I would want him to yeah. in there, and then you can claw on him, can't you? And then... And then you but we got to that point I was talking about where suddenly there's been a big shift in the numbers and now the Necro really are going to struggle to keep what's left on the pitch safe from being either claw mighted or claw pomped for the remaining few turns. Yep. He has taken just that single step forward. He did the same maths that I did. Uh, now the Ghoul is going to have to cut, really cut this corner and do some threes if it wants to get a single dice on the ball. That might be the way to do it. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oof. It's two, it's two twos and two threes to get, and then a two plus go for it to get a single die on this ball carrier. I, ugh. And it is risking, as I said, you're, you know, a non-regenerating AV7 piece. Ghouls can die from grass stains. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had it, but I think they definitely shouldn't have fucking just pissed away a wolf on turn one. I mean, there's no... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that Sky to them at all. I think they were in a, a strong position with some really nice responsive pieces. They threw one of their good wolves away for no reason. It was it was sidestep anyway. You know, one step in from the edge didn't seem any weaker to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was just like I'm gonna put this guy on the sideline because he's got because I can because he's got sidestep and then he was like, yeah, ended his turn. He's like, fuck, I can't put him on the sideline because he's got sidestep. I'm sure he would have eight pieces free. Oh dear, <laughs> yeah, he only needs to use six of them. I mean, Bright is good at blood ball. I'm sure he, as soon as he did it, he's like, oh fuck, <laughs> I've done good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've I've shown off my sidestep on a turn where it's just not that relevant. Another big, uh, big stink failure there. Oh, that would have been a nice chain potentially, wouldn't it? Yeah, interesting. It certainly could have been. Um, you know, pushing that white into a position where it could have taken out this zombie, allowing the ghoul in the back door much, much easier. Can't afford to re-roll it, of course, because we've. Uh, it looks very like we're going to overtime. And at the moment, the kick with the kequity is in Bright's favour. He is doing the two, two, three, three, two, two, two. Oh. And gets there, but even on the reroll, just gets more twos. That's one of those ones. Why hasn't he stood up the flesh golem yet? I don't think he's blitzing with him. Now, there's a key <laughs> difference, Jim. We talked in the first half about that 4 plus 3 plus to get the hit on the ball, uh, which was a better hit when he got there. Uh, and Bright, with his experience of this format, not frightened there by three twos and two threes to get a single die which was less good when he got there uh, but still feeling that was worth the risk with one of his much better pieces um, I like the balls of that it's a bit of a shame for him it didn't work yeah. he just ended the turn without standing up that fleshy didn't he yeah now if anything ever needed kicking in the face right now it's that fleshy <laughs> yeah. however first he needs to deal with the side step that's on the ball carrier well, the ball carrier call does have two heads it can dodge at a two well, now, you see, me being a Blood Bowl player, what I would think would be 
claw mighty this uh, flesh golem, and then yep. and then block this guy and hit the ball with your claw palm. But from this match, we've we've discovered that actually you should just blitz with the rackle. <laughs> with the rackle, Pete. Guaranteed well, you can get three die with the rackle, which is what he's doing. Um, unless you put another piece in, you can't guarantee pushing it off the ball. But you've got three dice, for goodness sake. Yeah, he screw could your courage in the sticking post, that it cannot fail. Yeah, so he's, he's done this block first, and now he can, now he can get in. Yeah, that was desperation from Bright. I mean, I think he probably shouldn't have put in the reroll. Right? I hate it's, that block first, Jim, because if that had been a push, then suddenly your rackle piece can't hit this uh, yeah, sidestep you've, goal. You've got the claw mate as well, though, haven't you? Like it was. Yeah, but I I wanted that to to hit the golem, as you said. Although I think he is, I think he's going to hit the golem with the claw mighty and then yeah. bring the tackle pond to hit the ghoul, at which point you can afford to put something in uh, to make sure it can't stay on the ball carrier uh, and still have the... Oh, not if you don't take it down. Okay. No. Nope. Claw mighty takes it down. So now the rackle, nope. now the rackle does come in. I see. Surely we should have done these hits before we hit the uh, with the strength five, because as I said if the strength fives had been a push, the rackle wouldn't be available. No, no, you would, because that, that's why that's why you do the strength five one. Because if you push him, then you can push him diagonal. Then the claw might you can push him, and and then you. Okay. Then you oh yeah, I see. You can hit the same one with the claw mighty. Yeah. So he does move the uh, the rotter in, giving up his chance for a nice foul, but uh, guaranteeing the sidestep isn't on the ball. Uh, he deep. I didn't actually need to move him forward this turn, but in the real world, you probably should. Yeah. I mean, now you can just potato it, can't you? Yeah. Move this. Uh, you, you are open to the fleshy dodge. Oh, he's only moving three. He's only moved three. Oh, yeah, he can just go this way as well. Yeah. Right, so you can't even, you can't even be well. tagged by it now. Yeah. You can't be tagged by the zombie. And you can't be tagged by the ghoul. You're out of range of everything, Jim. It's, it's fine. That f move three's up fleshy. Doesn't want to go down, though, does it? <laughs> no. What oh, I must have been chatting with my wife. <laughs> That's my one. I'm not going there again, Jim. That's my one. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> hey, he makes the dodge. And he can't tag because he's movement three. What a useless zombie. Yep. It's, it was a bit pathetic, that, wasn't it? Just that little <laughs> stroll in the direction of the ball, knowing you're never going to get there. <laughs> yeah. Tragic. Do you claw pom this guy on three dice, or do you just hit him with a wrestle tackle, seeing as wrestle tackle is the most deadly player on your team? <laughs> See, I said it was my one coffee, and then you give me an easy in like that. You get it? Tell me how. Um, <laughs> he, he can pierce now, at least with his movement three. Woo! <laughs> He's actually too far away to make it three dice, isn't he? Four, yeah, five, six, seven, yeah. eight, nine. Yeah, seven yeah, he can't five. even get a three dice. No. However, um, I, I don't know why we need it. I suppose that's in case of a fail. It stops the dodge off to base. So I don't hate it. Um, but I'd be looking to drop a mighty foul in on the ghoul here, and I'd be trying to use every other piece to do that. Yeah. I've got the bribe. doesn't matter if it even fails. That's a lovely hit on the golem. Now he moves to, to drop one of the assists off in case the foul comes on him. Oh, doesn't even scratch it with the claw palm, Jim. And it's not what I've been told claw palm does. I think El Duderino has the right to blame the cyanide servers for that. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so now I would, I'd, I'd still, I'd, I'd be fouling the ghoul. Yeah. It doesn't regen. That's the key reason why. And the best thing is you don't even need your bribe, right? Because you've, you've got no. two reserves, so you yeah. don't even need to waste your bribe on this. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's a, it's a junk rotter. Uh, we've got two KOs, but we're going to have two rolls at them, and we've got two babes. So yeah. I'd, I'd let this go if it was called. Yeah. And keep it so I can foul in overtime, and pretty much make sure I'm keeping that piece on the field. Yeah, amazing foul here. Yeah, now the other warrior can just move away or not, it just doesn't matter. And this piece, if it dies, big equity shift. No. Oh! I was 
going to say it was going to be an equity shift worthy of being reported in the Daily Mail. <laughs> I don't like moving people away from the ghoul. I would have wanted to move him towards the ghoul that fell in next. Oh no, he's, it's turn 15. Okay. Yeah, I, even with a bribe, I'm not sure you can foul it next turn. I think you need to take this to overtime and just see what happens. Yeah, no, I, I didn't realise much to it. Now, with one wolf out. Uh, obviously, the white that is standing in the uh, uh, dead box isn't dead. That did regenerate. Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot here is on the uh, the other wolf. It's got two goes at recovering from KO. KO. Um, sorry, the um, the other white, and it did on the very first one. Yeah. So now it is only the uh, the fend block guard zombie. That's way too many skills even for a guard zombie, really. Yeah, uh, but it's been useful on the claw pommer. That's the only piece that's out for the necro, and it's going to get another roll to see if it comes back. Yeah, it's still eleven versus eleven, but just yeah. a huge loss in quality with this claw pommer gun. I thought you were going to say with the coaching, uh, but yes, with the claw pommer <laughs> gun on the uh, on the necro team. <laughs> oh, of um, and I, if anyone watches the back of the vod, don't watch the vod. Um, I was joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that was that was a huge, a huge mistake by Bright. It, it definitely, like, he definitely wasn't going to definitely win if he didn't do it or anything. But uh, it was just, it was just so huge, wasn't it? It was such a yeah. massive, massive. Yeah, mistake. a rare. I mean, let's face it, a rare coaching mistake. I think Bright has coached this the better so far. I've, I've liked a lot of the things he's done. Yeah. Necro are a team that needs to be used very exactly with each piece really doing its job. And I thought until then he'd, he'd pulled some nice shapes, as it were, uh, found some good lines. Uh, or just had good tactics and coached well, if you want to use normal human language. Um, <laughs> but I think El Dudorino, you know, he again, I, I, I didn't hate a lot of the decisions he's taken. I'm still not sure when he could have pushed up the side and instead he came back inside. But in long term, he did make it work. He finally got the chip on the piece he's been after all game. And that could be really, really big, no matter who gets the ball in overtime. Yeah. Did we need to put the warrior on the line here? I mean, there isn't a claw pom piece left. I guess there's no harm, but couldn't we have just put three junk rotters there? Yes, maybe he will. I mean, even the foul might, the foul fen, the wrestle fen, I guess I know why it's there, but does it need to be? It'd be more use in overtime than a junk rotter. Yeah, I think he's got, no, he hasn't done it. Oh, yeah, he no. should have definitely put on the rotters. He could have also saved his best players from a, from a rock. I mean, I think if this was turn eight, yeah, players. again, I. I don't know. I mean, I think th those are the three he puts on the line when he sets up, and I think he just hasn't thought, do they need to be on the line this turn? And the answer to me is, no, they don't. Mm. There is a chance the one turn, yep. The sidestep on the wolf makes it a lot, a lot more likely. But he is yep. on the, uh, he is on the edge three, isn't he? Which is going to make the dodges through. Yeah. Tricky. Um, and if you look at the back line, there's, uh, there is a space without tackle or, um, or tentacles yes, between yeah, the strength yeah. five and the two-headed ball carrier. Yeah. That's what he needs to be aiming for. Um, he's setting up on the wrong side of the field for that, but of course, by the time you uh, you get the pushes and you head around the corner, there's still time to aim through that gap. Anywhere else is a mistake if he gets to that point in the chain push. Of course, the rain isn't going to help. Uh, that's an agility three wolf, so it's going to have to catch in the rain. Even if there's nothing touching it, that's a four. Yep. And then no agility, no stunty, breaking through a two-line wall, uh, sorry, a, a, a back line uh, where there's two tackle zones in the middle. Not easy for agility three, and that requires a five. Followed by a four the other side, and then a three to get off into the end zone. Yeah. But obviously, and as we all know, even if you make the... Even if you do the tough stuff happen, it's getting off that's often hard. <laughs> yeah. And if he fails the four plus, he'll have to put the reroll in, won't he? If he gets that far without using the reroll. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, he does. The, if he pops dodge on the five plus, he's going to have to use the team reroll on the four plus or the three plus. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But I, I mean, I mean it's probably I think, not before then. Yeah, I think if the catch failed, I'm not sure because. I mean, he has. He's got two rerolls. It's not a lot, though, is it? it it's, I'd probably want to keep them dry for overtime just in case. I, I mean, even if I get the ball, I may well need them. So Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. I think if I get the wolf heading down the field with re-rolls in hand, then for any of those three dodges, I'd be prepared to throw a re-roll at it. Yeah, yeah. But I think prior to that, I'd let it go. 
that's that's my call on this. Let's see what Bright thinks. Oh, he gets the oh. touchback as well. Yep. Huge yeah. Huge result. Yep. Two marvellous things happening on the kickoff result there for Bright. Ball goes straight into the Wolves' hands, of course. As someone did point out the other day, the referee by far the best thrower in Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> Never seems to mess it up. So now he can definitely put in a guy to assist, can't he? So he can make this 3D on the first hit. Yeah, I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's got that ability. Yeah, so he does that. Yeah. This is, uh, I might re-roll any of this now, to be honest. That's so good, isn't it? Getting the, getting the ball for free. Yeah, it Huge well, equity shift. I th yes, I mean maybe I I would still because it's still a five four three Jim to get through. I think I'd still want to be heading there with the re roll in hand. I would as well, but beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> no, true. <laughs> Didn't expect it to go that way. I thought he was going to come back more centrally, it but doesn't okay. matter though, does it? Really? Not not really, no. Because he, he can he can sidestep to that side next. Oh no, okay. So I don't like that. Because he could have just sidestepped to that square anyway, right from this. Point. Yeah, exactly. So so I, yeah, I, I I didn't. It didn't really matter which side he went there because he could have gone back to here. But so but he now, can still sidestep to the inside here, and that still gives yeah. him a line to the uh, to the gap that I I called. And if he doesn't go there, um, I, there needs to be a reason why not. I mean, you don't want to go through past the tackle on any of those dodges if you can avoid it, and you can avoid it. Right, so at this point, he's got the range. Ooh, so you, you do the dodge not first. Not going to want to go out. Dodge. Yeah. Don't you? So, yeah. I think at this point, I'm all in, Jim. I wouldn't have stacked it. I, I would have wanted to see... If I'd used the dodge there and then thought about it again. Yeah, that sure was a dodge use. Team. Oh, doesn't yeah. make the five. Does throw the reroll at it and fails it again. Not into removal, though. So we are seeing overtime. Jim, I'm so excited. I don't know whether to piss or shit. <laughs> uh, but as it happens, I'm just going to have to go and have a quick word with my son. I will be right back in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would have wanted to do the dodge to see if I still had dodge. And if I still have dodge, I would have known I would have definitely rerolled anything. And then I would have thought about whether to reroll the edge five there, you know, like obviously he made his mind up first before he moved anything, but I think I would have made my mind up after seeing if I popped up. Um, I wouldn't have made my mind up in that short space of time. But obviously he had, and, uh, and he did that. Um, yeah, I, 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 that's what I mean. I would, I would have, I would have seen, I would have seen if I popped dodge and then thought more because he had more time, didn't he? That's the thing, right? He had more time, so it's not like with these fifteen-second chunks and stuff. I wouldn't want to have had to have seen that I'd pop dodge and then only have fifteen seconds to think about whether to use the reroll. I would have, I would have moved the the first dodge and then thought long and hard whether to re-roll that five plus i would have just i would have just liked more time to think about it personally but he didn't he's down to one re-roll and he hasn't got the ball so it's looking very tough for bright now and he needs to not sacrifice this wolf for no reason <laughs> this half um, hello, Lil Vaz. Hello, Muppet. It has been a pretty good game. Yeah, I think. I think both play, both people have played well, aside from one turn from Bright, um, which was horrendous. Um, and everything else has just been, you know, opinions, whether things were like right or wrong. Hello, Dimmy. Hello, anyone who haven't said hello to. Sorry if I missed anyone. Because I have been, like, talking about the game a fair amount, to be fair. I've been, I've been neglecting chat a bit. I do apologise. Um, I'm gonna get a, 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 a throat sweet thing. Whatever they're called. A dual action antiseptic throat lozenge. There you go. Be right back. Well, I've rushed back because I don't want to miss a second of this. Oh, slap my ass and call me Mary L. Dude. Reno has the ball coming his way.
So a very careful setup here, trying to mitigate against the blitz. Knows he's got the ball coming to his hand. It's his to lose from this point on. Hello, little Baz. Want to be a killer goat? And don't we all deep inside? I'm tempted to ask who was on the other end, Dimmy, but we're trying to keep it clean. <laughs> right. uh, did the one bad turn get him in overtime? Maybe Muppet. I mean, it's hard to say, but it was just it was just terrible. He just moved his wolf down to here on turn one and got it surfed. Um. <laughs> it was a big change in in the whole momentum of that drive, not having to fear two wolves at any point. It meant he could leave much more open cages, get a bit more rowdy and trying to take out the other wolf, which he did. Um, it, it was so early in the half, though, very hard to say if it really cost the entire touchdown or just was a huge, huge mistake. But it yeah. certainly was a huge, huge mistake. Yeah. Now, normally you love it when a piece catches the ball, but do you really want it on a fend wrestle rotter? I would no. say no. <laughs> no, I And yet he is just centralising it. It's definitely not handing off this turn. Mm. Again, I think a bit defensive there. Yeah, I think I think it's okay, right? Because you, like the the early turns are when you're you're most vulnerable, especially when you're yeah. fairly bashier than your opponent. So um, if he stabilizes for a couple of turns, gets the advantage in the bash war, and also he could he could have the uh, the actual ball carrier as a handoff outlet, couldn't he? Um, yes. Yep. I'll see you that, Jim. But I will raise you a. Here is the turn where you're going to have a big wall in front of it. If it uh, moved the the one behind where he's put the ball carrier. And then hand it off from there. No chance of a bobble through, and lots of pieces to uh, to guard the flanks. So yeah. I do take your point. Stabilise and then do the handoff. But I can also make that argument that you know handing off now was definitely an option. It definitely uh, was. Yeah, I would have had him one square back anyway. I wouldn't have put him right yeah, behind. Yeah, so I don't like people right behind. No, I don't. Like yep. Oh dear, spit roast. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately only think of one thing when somebody mentions the spit roast, but there you go. Yes, I already did that joke just as you were returning. When oh, Dimmy said he'd had a, had a nice Sunday roast, I asked who else was involved. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I do think the mission of a commentator is not just to say, oh, look a four. I do think you have to try and be entertaining. <laughs> as well as talk about the game and try and give some insights. So forgive me if that's not to your taste. Other casters are available. <laughs> Is it a hog? Yeah. <laughs> a hand beast. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, wild boar. Oof. <laughs> oh, dear. One of the funniest things was... There was a... Uh, oh, I don't know if I should tell the story or not. I, I won't. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, let's wait for a Jim After Dark moment. <laughs> yeah. That's from just the chuckle in your voice, I'm guessing, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I probably shouldn't, so let, let's not. Oh, dear me. But trust me, it was funny. <laughs> I think I've already been scatological for one uh, one cast <laughs> enough. <laughs> It was a right laugh last night, wasn't it? Holy shit. It was funny, yes. It was amusing. Yeah. <laughs> the casting I, of the games was a fucking car Yeah, crash. it was an absolute <laughs> joke. But uh, I'd had just enough whiskeys to enjoy it. <laughs> I tried briefly to talk a little bit about Blood Bowl, but it just it never got any traction, did it? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> right now he's uh, he's actually using the other wolf uh, to do some hitting. I, d I don't hate that. Uh, using his nice guard pieces to both wall up, but also to provide a fulcrum for that wolf to hit and then hide behind. I don't even hate that dodge off. That's uh, where it fell. Is uh, has added some strength to that flank actually. Mm. Do you claw on the white here? I do. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like we're going to go for the uh, the rookie rotter. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's seventy five percent knockdown. Yeah, good chance of getting it. Gets it on the both down. It's a nice position to claw pom from. Very hard to see the foul coming back. What has? Yo, oh, it's dead. It's straight dead, dead, dead. Uh, I'm going to try and as I, I heard someone describe it. Because I don't want to be negative about him. I love Mr. Page. The the simple pleasure he takes in killing pieces. Dead, dead. <laughs> 
He's Massive. a simple man with simple needs. He just wants to kill things. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> now, the big question for me here is, do you even bother trying to activate the beast? Do we just sit there and go, ha-ha, you've won less? I mean, there is a nice position, one in front of where this line is. Uh, advancing the ball a single square. I don't hate that. Yeah. You can uh, you can put a lot of pressure on that Fen zombie. Uh, but... I think, yeah, maybe... It's... If you're doing that, it has to be the beast that goes there, I think. But no, he is looking, I think, to stabilise in place. Is he going to try a handoff this turn? I don't yeah. like it as much with that wolf and white in those rowdy positions around the side. Yeah, no, it's very risky now, isn't it? So yes, there, there is the absolute... There's a lovely spot for the beast. Yeah, wonderful. But That's there is the nice absolute find there, like, like that square. Yeah, this was the counterpoint that you made, wasn't it? That it was a yeah. safe turn to hand off, and now yeah. it's looking dodgy. But the thing is, you only have to hand off if it's dodgy. Right? That's the yeah. thing, isn't it? Right? Yeah, so. absolutely. There's no harm in actually advancing with that piece if you are, in, you know, in control. Having the very mobile Pestigore able to use its mobility rather than having to keep the ball safe isn't awful. Um, but for that to work, it does require you keeping getting on top of all of these numbers. Yeah. Uh, and the beast there holding all of those downed pieces and even if they all stand up and it's not supported which it now has been um, it's still only a one two die on the beast and that's you know you're hitting a piece that regens that strength five that isn't relevant really to how Dudorino wins this game mm. and does Harry's cheeky foul appearance which can always can always <laughs> throw a spanner in the works at inopportune yeah. times can't it absolutely uh, worth remembering uh, Blood Bowl fans out there watching this cast and I'm sure there's thousands of you, uh, both still carrying a bribe from one of the kickoff results here. Yes. We could easily see a cheeky foul go in. Yes. That might have been a play on this. Honestly, that this this block, Pest maybe should have just gone and fouled that uh, that guard, right? With no assists. No assists, um, but no real it's risk. It's a one in eight. One in 18 chance, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, assuming you break the armor, which there's a good chance you wouldn't. Yeah. So it's hard. I mean, free. I mean, that said, there is going to be other other times maybe where that that bribe becomes more useful. And whilst you've got it, the opposition does have to think about pieces that get exposed and can be mass gang fouled with a good safe cage around it. Yeah. Um, so I don't hate keeping it keeping it dry either. No. No, I'd say that it's interesting, isn't it? I think either either option was. Um... Yeah. Now this is interesting. If he uh, if he gets the power here, there is a route through to the ball, Jim. Oh yeah, it goes for the one D. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I didn't mind this cage, but I, it, it's not safe. Yes. You did something reinforcing that block, mighty go guard rotter straight by a warrior straight behind it would have been the place to put another piece. Yeah, he can't go for a two D, can he? Because that'll block his path. He's got to take the no, one D. If he's has going to take for the this, one die here. If he's going for the ball, he does gets get the it. Well, now. How much do you commit here? Because you can put a ghoul in onto the uh, the claw palm piece. You can then put a guard in uh, onto the straight in front of the ball carrier, and then you can hit for two. Uh, but your recovery options are pretty minimal. It does look like that's what he's going to do. Yep, so there's the cancel piece. Here comes the guard piece. Now we get... I mean, there's still the wolf to recover after this. Yeah. And he'll power him here. He doesn't get the power. Last re-roll. And it's a fend piece, so the, the, the ghoul isn't following up. And, and it's it stuck in. on the tackle, mighty the tackle claw palm. He sticks in gets, the last re-roll. Gets, yeah, gets him down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. There's that handoff piece either. And there's that handoff, Jim. <laughs> and that ghoul, I think, has to dodge away because it's on the claw, mighty palm, tackle, pestigore piece. The one that he doesn't want to be on at all. Yeah, but then it means that he's occupying him, but then he just gets to rackle him, so yeah, it's this. Yeah, this the, could the be rackle it. piece comes for the wolf. This could be it. And then if the uh, the beast of Nurgle manages to even uh, push this uh, this white, once all of that's done and the ball's safely away, you can get two die on that ghoul. Yep, there which you I would be looking to do. I'd be looking to move this, get this wolf out of the way, and assuming that works, because it is a sidestep piece, it's not guaranteed, then I'd be pushing the ball over onto the right flank where it's nicely screened, putting a bit of reinforcement around and trying to activate that beast to give me the assist to hit the ghoul. 
there's a good chance we could take out both the wolf and ghoul this turn, and that would be simply glorious. Mm -hmm, sure well. And you know, a bit of a mistake there by uh, by El Duderino, but he actually profited from it, didn't he? Yeah. I, think, I do yeah. think that Pestigo should have been where I would have fouled him, even yep, if he too. weren't fouling him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That, as I said, that block uh, mighty blow warrior needed reinforcing. So it takes the three die on the wolf. There is still a piece that could activate the beast if he really wants to. I mean, it could be done by the uh, the strength five warrior. That could just hit the uh, the zombie, and as long as it gets to advance, the beast could be activated. Well, a little bit harder making though. that much of a commitment to the wolf to keep the ball safe, but it's it's doable. The the beast can't hit anybody though. <laughs> oh yeah, new new plan here, Jim. We just retreat the ball carrier one square, and we foul the wolf, don't we? Yes. Maybe two. Maybe like down here. Okay, just one. Maybe he's gone come further to get. Further yeah, that's fine. Anything. I'd put the foul in. No, I could, I'd, I'd do the hit with the strength of five before it. I don't think I'd hit with Ooh. the beast though. I'd do the foul next. Wow. Just the two D with him. Okay, he's taking on the uh, yeah the worst ghoul instead, but it's still a decent hit. Is he, yeah, he's going to pile on, isn't he? You don't take piling on and don't pile on into a regenerous AB seven. Gets the chip. Badly hurt, but out for this drive, which means out for the game. Now the numbers are starting to look really good. I'm definitely putting this foul in on the wolf, Jim. Yeah, but I mean, you're giving up potentially a, a well, easily a 1D on the ball. That's the problem. Yeah. Holy fuck, he definitely uh, says holy fuck. It's got him. He's gone. Bribe fails. And the bribe so failed. On the ball. Now it's an easy two doing the ball. Yeah, I hated this. Just put him, put him back here, or, or even over here. Like either, either, either one yeah. to the right or, or behind the screen. Don't just put him. Yeah, there. I, I think one to the right for me, Jim. Um, but uh, yeah, that that wasn't a strong square. Still work to do to get those hits, but it's you've got to think it's got to get done. Pushing it's another reason square. I'd have taken this hit with the strength five before doing that. There was an easy two die on that zombie, the one that's just hit. And that would have uh, slightly made it hit harder to get the beat, get this beast down. Dude, why did he hit with him? He could have hit with this one. That was a huge mistake. That that's another big mistake. But it's um, it, I mean the root is still there. It just means you have to be your turn ordering isn't what you would ideally want it to be, is it? Oh, I hate that because if you, if you'd hit it with the other guy, then this guard comes around. And, yeah, uh, the plus side of it is that the beast isn't. Good. If you'd hit it with the other guy, it would have been on the uh, the strength five warrior to stand straight back up, and now it has no assistance, no friends. Yeah. So that might be why, or it might just be a mistake. Yeah, I think playoff nerves was the key. Was the key thing there. And now we're hitting without block. Yeah, that was the thing. But the block step can come round, and then come round the back. I do hate it when people come around the back, Jim. It always worries me. <laughs> There's only one way to beat them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're probably two of the only people old enough in Blood Bowl to remember that glorious song. <laughs> Slightly overshadowed by Three Lions, but wasn't it? Wasn't it in its day just a beautiful, beautiful piece of uh, of disposable pop? It was glorious. Yes, he can with that follow as left as given the easy chain out. Um, so now, yeah. if he wants to base, he's got to be able to hit, be hit by the right. He's got to base here, so it's not an easy train. He's Always got to put that uh, that sidestepping ghoul around the back of this. It's... Yeah. yeah, he's got to put him here. Yeah. Which does mean it's on the, the rackle piece, but there's only one reroll left for El Duderino. You've got to try things that are going to sometimes pull that reroll. And of course, a rackle piece. There's a, just a chance that he wouldn't want to take a both down on it. Yup, there's the foul. His bribe yeah. works. His one works, though. <laughs> the deep unfairness at the core of Blood Bowl demonstrated amply there. <laughs> yep. So now there's another guard on him, so it is he is strength five, this this guy, but I yep. mean, he's got the assist Yeah, right I, there I didn't, and didn't hate that foul at all. Uh, I don't even mind doing it before the ghoul dodge, because it is a two-plus fail. Yep. Of course, it is on a tackle piece, so it does have to do a two-plus, does it? Has he got the gumption to put it where it really needs to be? Yes, he does. That's the square we looked at, wasn't it, Jim? 
Yep, and then dodge the white. Yep, love that. This can yep. this can really solidify things here. Can he get to here or not? Maybe he's just here. Yeah, so really he couldn't he couldn't side. reach the better. I think the better square was one more, but he couldn't reach. Could he? Yeah, I mean you had to do another dodge, another two plus dodge, and then another two plus go for it to get where you really wanted to be there. So it added two twos at a time where you've got no rerolls and the turn's not gone badly. I didn't hate just tagging that rotter down. Yeah. And it no. does mean the free warrior at the very front has some difficulties getting back relevant, so it's all fine. It's not quite as strong as it could have been if you had a reroll to take those two twos. Um, no core would say, and I don't disagree that sometimes you, if those two twos were vital, you've still got to do them. Um, yeah. The first one, of course, it didn't pop dodge, did it? So it still had a dodge to get uh, the diagonal square. Yeah. No, it didn't pop dodge. So one of them would have been a one in thirty-six, and then a one in six. All right, this is the edge three one, so it'd have been one in nine. But yeah. oh yeah, one in nine, and then a one in six. <sighs> Still it would have been better, sometimes wouldn't it? you got to do it. It would have been a lot stronger. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Whether he should have done that or not, but I, I, I don't know. I, I quite like this. I think I would have probably done this, and I think probably a lot of people would have done this. Yes, yeah. I'm not saying really this is terrible. It's a really strong place to put it that had no risk attached. Yeah. Um. It's fine. Yeah. That's and true, now that he's got those three guards on the uh, on the tackle mighty uh, the mighty blow claw piece, mm. I I wonder if we're going to see a blitz back from that free warrior. But it, it's a the what piece, piece I would blitz on is actually the fend. So yeah, I may as well do it with the claw popper because I would have done it on that fend uh, zombie. Yeah, I was thinking that. But it, it hasn't been done, that hasn't been the call. And then with the rook... Ooh. Yeah, and then I'd have used the two steps to be the other side of this... Um, of the Claw Mighty Warrior, and then used the Spare Warrior to get the assist and try and knock off the uh, the Blodge Ghoul, but... The Blodge White, but it's that's still not a great plan. No, it's just, this he is, is clearing the... Bit, but it's it's kind of hard to see where he goes next. There is a two plus dodge, of course, because he is two heads. Yep. Perhaps Meets. that's the answer, and just get out around the outside somewhere. But yeah, hard. Maybe that warrior bases, and he, he just goes for the blockless hit. Like, because if he gets the power, it helps a lot. <laughs> well, that's I mean that's what I was looking at originally, but it's it's a one in nine risk. You look at only about a one in three of getting that power. It's yeah. it's bleak odds. Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? This is really tricky. Like this is this is a real turn for a uh, Blood Bowl yep. supercomputer. <laughs> yep. However, the uh, there is a blitz still, which means any of those pesticles can hit at strength four. No, no, he used the blitz. He used the blitz to hit. The oh no, he did down. use the blitz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's just two plus away. And... Yeah, and gets around the back the back side of this warrior. That's quite nice. It's not super safe, but it's it's all right. But again, if you were taking that two die there, then I, I'd have done it before that dodge personally. But yeah, but then you really want to have the reroll available for the dodge, don't you? If you can yeah, there, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's, it, it's very that, tricky. And now that position on the the beast of Nurgle did help. It did, no friend could get over there, so it was a four plus to stand back up, and it's now out of this turn. Of course, that might, if he'd been south two squares, <laughs> would have maybe solved all of this problem. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was a yeah, risky, really risky move to go for. So. It was. But when it's for all the marbles, Jim. Mm. I, I, yeah. I mean, I didn't hate it. I still don't hate it. It was still a strong position. It still did tie up a lot of pieces, but there was a stronger one, wasn't there? There was only a one in nine, one in six away from being available. Yeah. This is a, this is a tricky turn as well, isn't it? I mean, it really is, yeah. Um, I, I mean, you can get the white back relevant through the gap where the beast of Nurgle didn't stand up, uh, and then on your way through, you can knock over the mighty blow warrior. That's not awful. And then you can put the sidestep ghoul up, or, you know, just touching the ball, which as we all read Reddit and Facebook, that pretty much ends the game. <laughs> yep. 
Um, and then you could actually get two zombies back as a sort of screen if it doesn't work, and somehow, unthinkably, that Ooh. pest got two pluses away. How about this? Look, this is quite nice. You could dodge, and then you could blitz the claw pommer, and then and then dodge through again to get out in front. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's a two die you can get on the claw pommer, but you do need to power it then. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely has to be a power. But if you don't power, then then he then he gets the two bellies behind. Looks like he's taking a one in nine risk on that. A warrior first, he makes it, gets the hit. Ooh. And gets a stun. That could be very big. So he's going safer. Just getting him back. Yeah, he is just uh, getting that piece back relevant. Now, what, you, what I don't hate here, I'd probably do the two. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, yeah. surely you've got to go 4 3, right? There's, there's, yeah. You can get there by going 4 3, so I don't know where he's going to go the rest of his movement. Yeah, but that's not to four, that's three. yeah to take a straight five. I I don't love with even with the the dodge. Yeah. Um, he did roll there a a four rolled into a re-rolled into a three. Um, <laughs> so he'd have certainly made the uh, the four plus, and then uh, then he could have tried the blitz with the ghoul. I mean, I, I I didn't hate the plan. I just didn't like the execution of it. Yeah, exactly. It, it's you. That's not getting you anywhere that the other two wouldn't, right? If you're going straight back, yeah. Yeah. you're going straight back this way. This isn't getting you anywhere that you couldn't have got. For once, I was thinking right. slightly more negatively. I was going to put the uh, the ghoul sidestep at the other side as he was going to hit from that side anyway. And then I was going to blitz off with that white uh, because yeah. it was only a, a two plus to get him back and put him in front of this ball again, yeah. uh, which I'd have had there, both of my whites in front of the ball and a sidestepper on it. Yeah. Yeah, and after that stun, I've also got a zombie that's free, so I, I thought that was quite strong. Yeah. A little bit more negative than Bright's plan, but I, I felt it would give me more pieces next turn. And uh, with that fail, I think this drives over. I think El Duderino, as long as he plays this turn, anything other than appallingly, um, should be free and clear now. Yeah, I think, I think if you're going to make that, you've got to just move this guy... I well, he was going to blitz him, wasn't he? He was going to, he was yeah. just going to dodge him, then he was going to 2D blitz with this. But, yeah. that, but even two. that was a 2 plus off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That was a 2 plus to dodge off the tackle and then another 2 plus go for it to hit after yeah. he got the attack, the guard in place. Yeah. Um, so I quite liked the 2 plus just to get the, uh, the blitz off to get the white back in front, which is where that yeah. uh, claw pom piece has now gone. And then just try the 2 two plus without a second one just to get the ghoul onto the ball carrier with its sidestep and make the blitz happen there yeah yeah i'd have liked just moving that first and then you've got something back you know but i mean that, that said bright's plan wasn't terrible it just we didn't like the square he chose to go to we felt the four yeah. three with the re-rolls of the dodge was better yeah yeah it it, it was better wasn't it I'm yeah i think so yeah it's better oh double score does he keep his last reroll? He does! Oh, I think that was the wrong thing to do! Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Ooh. I think this is a quite exposed position, looking at where things are on the pitch. I mean, it's massively explicit. I, this don't, is what... I don't like it at all. This is a fairly easy two die on the ball. This is what we call in the trade a, uh, <laughs> a gaping <laughs> hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong square, isn't it? No, that's fine, because he can he can cancel the assist and block that, so he pushes him back. So yeah, I, yeah, I he can. Yeah, no, that's all right. Get him in front. Yeah, yeah. And then just blitz with this, blitz with this zombie. Yeah. And technically, still has both the uh, AG3 white and possibly the AG4 ghoul to come and uh, get somewhere near this ball after he knocks it over. Yeah. Only 55% to knock it over, it's not certain. But I feel not using the reroll there was a major cock up from Aldo Dorino. Yeah. Yeah, I think you probably do just stand up the stand firm first. Yeah. Move this move this zombie back. 
Cause, yeah, because um, it, it's it's doing work there already, both as a screen and yeah. uh, adding yet another assist onto that warrior. Yeah, that no, the gets the first, uh, I, I do think that's wrong. I think he had to move this zombie back and also put this uh, put this zombie onto his Rackler because his, his yeah. Rackler is the main threat to stop yeah, you. The Beast of Nurgle doesn't need any zombie on it. Both of those zombies could be in better positions right now. Yeah. I mean, the, the two warriors should each have had a zombie on them, or one should have a zombie and one should be on the rotter, but uh, whichever way, they shouldn't have just been stood there on a beast that is of no use, and even if it stands up, can't get anywhere interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I like this one for sure, because then, then you've got it on the rack. Yeah, the, that's uh, nice. On the down down. Yeah. Oh, he's failed. Oh, fails the two plus, though, and <laughs> removes himself. Lovely. Oh. Uh, I, are we going to kicks, Jim? We, we could be, couldn't we? Could be. This is looking tricky I, for old dude. I do here. feel if we re-rolled those skulls, it was not hard to solidify this position. Mm. I think that turn was a major cock-up. Yeah, it was. That was like that was the critical one that you had to re. But the, even that wasn't a critical one to re-roll. It was just it was it. What he had to do was he he should have blocked with his rackler. He should have hit the uh, goal yep. with his rackler, and then if he gets the pal, then move this beastman back to cover everything. And then he could have eaten that double skull, but obviously it would have mean he would have double skulled with a rackler. But then you definitely re-roll, and then because yep. he just he just had to shore up that area of the field, didn't he? And he left yep. it not shored up. I mean, I think it was also slight overhitting. I mean, I, I yeah. liked you know, as you said, hitting the ghoul and then trying to recover the other beastman. Then I'm not sure if you'd already used the re-roll, I'd have even bothered with those hits. They were in a good position, screening things off. Yeah. Yeah, that was... I'd have to have a, another good look at it again, but certainly from the position it was in, you know, you look at the double skulls, you look at the field, and you say, no, if he goes down here, I'm losing the ball. Yeah. And you re-roll it. For fuck's sake, stand up the beast. He might, he might be wanting to GFI with a beast, might he, at the end? Yeah. If he, if he stands yeah. him up, he's either, he's either moving him away to be activated next turn, or he's GFIing to, to get closer and activate him next turn. If he just stands up and moves yeah. one, he, he's not really doing... Really well, the only place he can move one is next to the uh, the Strength 5 warrior, yeah. who doesn't need the help. And then he's still not particularly relevant to the drive. He's actually heading in the wrong direction. So yeah. I, here I would do the 4-2-2. Yeah. Right, so now, to surely he has to take it. two steps forward and assist the Claw Pommer in hitting the white in front of it. That's, that's the only, only thing that makes sense. I know, but it makes it a one D instead of a no instead of a two reds. I just stay there because he's got no re rolls himself. But then, oh, I don't know. Oh. Well, I mean that's another one D back. But my plan at least gave you a one D to drop that white. So yeah, that's that's fine. Oh, and he gets the chip there as well. Ooh. And now we can do the GFI at the end. Still another badly hurt. Uh, other than the death, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. all of these, uh, all of these nice pieces for the necro are coming back for the next game if they somehow manage to win here. Ooh. And there's the GFI, so it is useful. The four and the two worked. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, Jim. It's a two plus dodge for a one die, isn't it? It is. Yeah. See, he took that one die anyway. He just took it on a <laughs> slightly pointless piece. Yeah. Um, but it would it would have been a two plus, right? So he could have rolled a he could have rolled a one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at least this way, he's got to roll a five, which obviously is more likely than him rolling a one. But a two plus five because he's <laughs> yeah, got to dodge off five, first, yeah. and it's a tackle he's dodging off. So yeah. two plus five plus that's not great dice. But it is more likely than him rolling a one. But then obviously yes. he could have then also rolled a one with a one D. And if he rolls a yep. one on the one D, then he's getting blitzed on two D. <laughs> yeah, but he does. He did have a re-roll, remember? And I would have not only moved there, I'd have pumped the re-roll in if needs be, if it's gold. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you get one D on the sideline. Oh, it doesn't scatter out. It doesn't follow. I would have, why are you not sure you got to follow there? Why would you but now, follow? Jim, uh, the ball carrier piece. I, it's going to really struggle to get to the end zone. It is. I don't know how you don't follow them, to be honest. That's if crazy. Follow... Absolutely crazy. Yeah. So instead he just popped a little uh, a little go for it in to go to the same square he would have, he ended up, you know, he could have just followed him to for free. 
I mean, yeah, movement's free, so like just follow, and you might catch the you, you, you might catch the ball, mate. You like imagine if it scattered there and he hadn't followed, and then he yep. just moves in there and has to roll a two plus to ca to pick it up that ends his turn. Yep. Maybe yes, he's been a bit too maybe he's been a bit too harsh now. Anyway, to be fair, his nerves are free. He's been playing this game for like absolutely, hours, hasn't he? This and this is this is a tense tense moment for both sides. Yeah, I feel like I'm being re really too harsh now. This is like yeah. And I, I remember, I'm trying very hard this season not to be. I'm still going to call bad things bad things, but um, you know, not everything is bad just because it's wrong. Sometimes it's a, a little mistake, or it's not a hundred percent as good as an, another option. Yeah. Or it's delivering different things later in the turn or the game. You know, there, there's all sorts of reasons, and I'm going to try harder to find those. Yeah. Right now, I liked that position. This time, I do like the uh, the. Piece that's right on the edge next to the ball. <laughs> yes, he stands firm. Because uh, it stands firm. No. And there's also not six players instantly free to serve him. <laughs> no, and there's there's no way forwards if you take your blitz on that piece, then you're not blitzing the other white that is directly in front of where you want to go. Yep, and he's out of time. So... Very tricky. So you know, he gets the power, that huge power, because with yep. a push, he, he would not have freed this claw palm. Now, I would. Claw palm the white and then rush forwards as a receiving option and yes. then try and pick up on a four plus with short hands. Yes, yeah, not claw palm him, just claw him. Yeah, just claw him. And if I push him onto the edge, Ooh. maybe I don't even try and pick up, but. Oh, that's. This is not okay. Although we've got the reroll, so as long as we got him knocked over here, we can put the full range of movement in, can't we? I can't, I can't as long as we do the pick up. Use oh the well, there we are. PC. Oh, he's, he's you killed can. him. You have to, have to. It, one reroll it makes you like two thirds favorite on the uh, on the roll for the uh, who wins the game. Scoring makes you an even stronger favorite, Jim. It does. It depends. I guess it depends what you're rerolling. Yeah. If I once I've picked up and got away, then I'm putting the reroll in to do those go for it to be in range. Yeah. I. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I need both go for it to be in range if I do this pick up and dodge off. If I fail the pick up or the dodge off, I probably don't. I mean, the pick up's got a reroll. The dodge off, I probably don't put the reroll into. Can you do GFIs? Would you not just the hand off GFI next turn? No. I'd do the two GFIs this turn because it puts me in range of just two plus two plus. Wow. Interesting. He gets the two GFIs. Does he do the handoff as well then? Yeah, free well, handoff, right? You've got handoff hand is a three. Well, unless it bounces backwards, but then that's a three plus two plus. Whereas where I am sat, sat right now, I don't think I'm going to get knocked backwards, and I'm two plus two plus. Yeah, so you've I got two chances. It would give you two, but then I guess yeah. It, it, oh, if I had two rerolls, I'd do it. With one reroll, I wouldn't. To be fair, now this white, it's a four-three to get a single hit, and then if it's sideways or you know if it isn't a pow, it's not that big a problem. Fails it. Yep. Now it's two plus two plus for El Dudorino to have a glorious win and see round two of the chalice. Now you reroll, obviously. <laughs> what a game of blood bowl, Jim. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> Doesn't need his reroll. Gets his win. Oh, I feel like that was a roller coaster. I mean, perhaps it's because I like El Dudorino, but I think Bright's a, a great coach. I don't think there were a lot of mistakes. There were little tweaks he could have made here or there, but wow, what a roller coaster that game really was. Yeah. I mean, I think there were quite a lot of mistakes, but nothing that was terrible. Just things that were not particularly good. Yeah, well, I mean, there was definitely one thing terrible by Bright. Yeah, the wolf on the sideline was awful. <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah. That was unbelievably terrible but uh, by any standard that was terrible but uh, yeah everything else was just like marginal and obviously nerves were frayed after a two hour game and everything and I, I yeah, feel yeah. it's been a bit too too harsh at one yeah I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be forgiving this season and I, I'm going to forgive them both because it, it gave us such a spectacle nip and tuck the whole way removals on both sides the whole way um, some really rowdy plays at times I thought Bright found a couple of really nice moves I thought El Dorino, I mean, the other big mistake, I think, was El Dudorino leaving that one die to get, you know, a fairly easy hit on his ball carrier. 
Uh, but that kind of all worked out in the end. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, wow. It? We've got a, a choice of, uh, of beautiful things coming up, Jim. Uh, Calcium Kaz is playing Davo in the Blood Bowl Streamers League. We know that Fatin is also playing Kanur in the Blood Bowl Streamers League. I presume everyone's planning to uh, sorry Super Leagues. I plan that assume they're all planning to stream their own stuff. I don't know if you're planning to have a look at either. Um, I'm not, but I will wrap up the YouTube. So, thank you very much, Purple Chest, for joining. Oh, what a pleasure! And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.